from Marvel TV, sponsored by Les Beer, and today I'm with comedian Ivo Graham, and we're discussing his new show, Binoculars. Tell us about the show, Binoculars. Um, it's about, it, it, it's just another boring young male stand-up talking about what it's like to be a young man and life experience, and guess what, being a bit socially awkward at school, and being not much of a lad at university, and all the same topics that everyone talks about, um, and hopefully, with enough of a like twist on it, or well written enough, or with enough actual jokes that it's a, you know, a bit different from the rest. But I can't pretend that it's some really fascinating concept or, or um, like innovative show. But to be honest, the last 15 minutes about living on my ground are pretty much the only thing that makes it remotely unique. And even I've already I've seen lots of other startups talking about living on my ground. Parents, so even that's not a USP. So all the personal experiences are true, or yeah, pretty much. I think it's good to. Um, uh, um, uh, I'm not a complete st sticker for it because it's like any story you tell in your life that gets funnier and less true every time you tell it. And it's fun to sort of embellish little details and things, but I think the basic sort of important like lines in the sand of the show, of, like actual important things, are, are if you know what I mean. So like um, um, uh, having you know. Um, kissed someone at a, at a school disco when I was 13. I like talking about that and I like the fact that's true because it's actually a, a sort of, I think it makes a sort of a memory in the retelling bit a bit more, uh, sort of bite, sort of gives a bit more verb because it means something to you. Um, and, um, and then, you know, whatever, what we've done up to that point and, you know, what song was playing over the loudspeakers or whatever, I don't think it's the biggest crime in the world to sort of have a bit of fun with that. Um, but yeah, fundamentally, it's a, it's a true show, and what it says about me is true. So why did you call it binoculars? Um, because it is, uh, that is literally just the end to one of the bits of the show. Oh, it's, okay. not, it's a really lame thing, I know, but I just didn't really... This was February, obviously, when you've got to think of your French title, and um, everyone's going for funny titles and funny puns on their name, and I'm sure there are all sorts of very droll things that you could do with the name Ivo. Um, but uh, I just didn't really want it to be, I just wanted to just have a sort of really nice, neat title. Quite boring, quite forgettable, but then you see the bit in the show and you sort of go, oh, it's like when that, like, I always like when, when albums don't have um, a title track, but like the title of the album is like buried somewhere in, the, in one of the songs and you hear it and you go, oh, that makes sense. Um, so, um, and people at the Fringe don't really say like, have you gone to see this binoculars guy? Everyone just says Ivo Growth Show or you know, whatever. Um, so I don't think the title is that important. I think it's quite a unique name. I like it. Well, I'm, I think it's a nice, like, I like all those films which have, like, really just neat one word titles like Tyrannosaur yeah. and Summerine and stuff. I think it, um, and uh, while I would not claim that it is as artistically worthwhile as those, it's just nice, it's neat. And um, I mean, it's, I think the boldest and funniest title of the fringe is James Acaster, who's called his show Lawn Mower. Uh, despite the fact that he doesn't mention a lawn mower once in it, and it's just a sort of like a random red herring to <laughs> mislead people. Um, but um, I'm not, I think I had to think of somebody who was in the show because a, a friend I went to see James's show and just had people coming out going, oh, that's the lawn mower bit. <laughs> um, so yeah, and the binoculars thing was like one bit in February, that was one of the bits I was definitely sure would be in it. So it was a safe bet. So what's your future plans after the French? Go home, have a big sleep. Um, uh, catch up with my gran, um, watch a few episodes of Pointless, um, and then start doing comedy again. Um, Will you come back to the French? Definitely. I'd really like to come back now. I mean, you feel a bit guilty coming back a year on you because more and more people doing it and what like, uh, and it's so crowded and you almost feel it's like your duty to sort of like do it one year and then maybe step back and let other people have a go the next year. But um, that's the dangerous thing about it. It's, it is so, I don't know what a cliche this is, it's so addictive. And you, as soon as I can, you know, you spend a whole year building up to your, to your first show, and sort of binoculars show is my first first solo album, and you think, oh, it's going to be, you know, I've had so long to work on it, it's probably going to be perfect, it's going to be great. Uh, and then as soon as you come up, you realise that it's very flawed and very hard, and the end is actually a really much bigger process, and all you can wait to do is go home, uh, is go and come and do another one better next year. I always remember, like, you sit in an exam, 
and you, uh, you can't do it and you, you don't know how to answer the questions and you go home with such like a fur to like, I've got, I'm really going to smash the revision for the next one and you have to hold on to that feeling before you start procrastinating again. Does that sort of make sense? That makes complete sense. Yeah, yeah. And you can catch um, the Noctulars at, is it Pleasant? It's Pleasant at 4 yeah. Pleasant at 4 yeah, at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. Yeah, yeah straight and, after points. And right up, <laughs> and right up to the end of the fringe. Yeah. This has been Waffle TV.